What's going on, S Factor Fitness team? If this is your first time clicking on one of my videos, welcome to the channel. I hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to give you a few exercises in my workout which I perform in order to really get that muscle development. These are some of the best exercises that are gonna help you take your shoulders to the next level. If you want broader shoulders, this is the workout for you. So let's get right into it. Before we get into the workout, let me start by saying good form is everything. Good form is more important than how much weight you can move around. Good form will determine how your muscles will develop and also the rate at which they will build muscle. All right, so now that that's out the way, let's get right into the warm up. Never start a workout without properly warming up your muscles and getting them ready for the workout. You will save yourself from injury and most importantly, you will optimize your muscle development. This exercise here is the rotator cuff rotation. This is my go-to warm up for all workouts. The rotator cuff is a group of muscles and tendons that hold your shoulder joint in place and allows you to move your arm and shoulder. That's the most basic description of the rotator cuff and you can find it all over the internet. If you have weak rotator cuffs, you won't be able to get the full range of motions when working out, simply because your arms and shoulders won't be able to move properly. That's simple enough, right? Now this exercise is best performed with a cable or resistance band when standing up. But if you lie down, like you see right here, you wanna be using a dumbbell or a plate. The difference between both variations is gravity. When standing using a cable or band, your arm will stay in place throughout the whole motion and you can focus mainly on pulling the cable or the band. Now, if you were to hold a dumbbell, your arm will want to drop lower due to gravity. That screws up the whole entire exercise. This is why when lying down, your arm is locked into place on your torso, not allowing the plate or dumbbell to drop lower than it needs to. Yes, I know a lot of that is confusing and trust me, I struggled with that for years, but now I got it right, I got it down packed. So mainly for me, when I'm doing this exercise, I normally use the resistance band. And if I'm in the gym, I'm using the cable. Mainly what you want to do is make sure that you, again, keep your arm locked into your side, locked on that torso, making sure nothing is rotating except for that forearm, in and out. Okay, now it's time to work. Kicking off the workout, I like to start with my rear delts. I start with rear delts simply because they are one of the most ignored muscles in underdeveloped in most physiques even mine. I train them first to make sure I have all of my energy and I won't slack. Now, if you have access to cables, a nice cable machine, I would preferably use that instead of dumbbells. But here in my home gym, I don't have a cable machine, so I'm only using dumbbells. The issue with dumbbells is that there is no tension at the bottom of the movement. When your arm is down, you are basically relaxed. Your rear delt doesn't turn on until halfway through the exercise. So you really need to focus when doing these. I keep a pronated grip throughout the movement. This right here is pronated. Hopefully you can see that. This is pronated just as if you're about to punch something. That's the pronated grip. I also make sure my arm is moving in one path, no angling, just straight up and down. If you pull at an angle backwards, your lat will jump in and help you. And then your focus is off of the delt. Understand when we're doing these movements, we wanna make sure that we are targeting that muscle and we're only using that muscle, at least primarily. When I'm at the top of the movement, I make sure to squeeze the rear delt and contract the muscle as best I can because once I release and go back down, there is no more work on that rear delt. All the work that's gonna be performed on the rear delt is normally at the top of the movement. You don't have to squeeze your shoulder blades together too tight, but you really wanna make sure that you're focused on getting that contraction when you're at the top. Now, hopefully you can see this, but when I'm down, I make sure I am pulling in one path, one path. Not taking my arm all the way back here getting an injury or anything like that, but focused on just moving straight, squeeze, release, just like that, the whole time. All right, next up we have military press. This is the main muscle builder of the workout, the mass builder. Sometimes I do this seated and sometimes I stand. And when you stand, it's called an overhead press. When sitting, I use less core and more shoulders. When you're standing and you have a weak core, you would not be able to move as much weight as you would like. So when you sit down, you remove some of that core activation and now you're able to push a little bit more weight. Now, the weight that you push is not as important as the form, but I'm just letting you know that you will be able to press more weight over your head if you're sitting down. 
The correct form to use on this exercise is have a slight incline on the seat. You never want to sit straight up and down. Grab the bar with your hands a little outside of shoulder width apart. Hold your arms in front of you and move them out a bit. That's where you want them. When you lower the bar, bring it to eye level. Angle your elbows inward a bit and keep your wrists above your elbows. Now, I know that was a lot, but I hope you caught it all. If it was too confusing, just focus on the clip. Notice where my elbows are. Notice how I have a slight lean. All this is important. All these cues are going to make sure that you get the proper development in the front delt. It's pretty spot on on the perfection. I keep the weight moderate enough to not sacrifice form. Again, if the weight is too heavy, you will have to sacrifice form and use a whole bunch of momentum, press up through your legs and all type of things like that. We want to avoid using too many body parts. We want to focus on nothing but front delt activation. All right, next up we have lateral raises. Now this is one of my favorites and I normally see a lot of people doing this wrong in and outside of the gym. Whenever I see it, I just want to walk up to somebody and say, why? Why are you doing it that way? What are you doing? A lot of times we just don't know how to really properly move this weight around to actually target that muscle that we want. So if you use all different type of techniques and you're doing this lateral raise incorrectly, you won't even hit the medial head, which is the middle of your deltoid, which we're focused on with the lateral raises. If the weight is too heavy, you'll end up using nothing but your traps to move the weight up. With that being said, you want to make sure the weight is moderate enough to allow you to keep your arms and hands fairly straight and moving in one path. This is similar to the rear delt movement where we're moving our arms in that one path. Now the difference with this exercise is that I like to twist my pinkies slightly up a bit where my wrist is turned, which allows the medial delt to be targeted better. So this is what I mean. I'm tilting my pinkies up to the ceiling, just like that, pinkies up. Like you're drinking a champagne glass or something. Twist, and you'll notice that from here, and then you twist, that medial delt is now a little more activated. Just play around like that. You'll notice that it, it turns on a bit, and that's how I like to move. I like to keep it right in that path, pinkies up, and I like to go straight up and down. I'm not pulling back, using my traps. I'm not doing none of that. I'm not pulling forward. I'm pulling straight to my side, pinkies up up and down again if you have cables it'll be great to use cables with this exercise because you will lose tension in the deltoid when you get about halfway down now there's no tension down here your delts turn on when you get about halfway right here and now they're activated so if you have cables it will allow you to keep tension on the deltoid the whole entire movement all right finally our last movement shrugs now not a lot of people like shrugs and that's simply because they hurt point blank period but normally a lot of folks are doing this exercise completely wrong as well shrugs if you're doing these correctly will work for those traps notice how i'm shrugging my shoulders backwards look at my traps working every single time you want to keep your head slightly forward and make sure you shrug behind you this would definitely work the traps and when you look in the mirror you will see the baseballs sitting on top of your shoulders i promise you that you just gotta work it correctly use proper form and really give it your all and everything that you do you have to give it your all what i want you to do is check out these videos right here if you're really serious about getting that proper shoulder development i promise you your shoulders will grow let's build muscle and if you like this style of a video where i explain the exercises and really preach that proper form i want you to go ahead and subscribe to the channel like the video and make sure that you share this share this on your social media platforms so everyone can get involved with that being said i'm out